Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse the Planet is here reminding you to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of the videos here on our YouTube channel. Remember, that's like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Now, enjoy this great video. Now, let's finish this moment of truth. Write this down. It is a sober thought that after centuries of Christianity, Jesus is dead to so many. How can people not accept someone who would love them no matter what they did, would forgive them no matter what? How come so many people are dead to Christianity because they have judged Christianity by the conduct of Christians. And it's sad to say we don't have a good record. We must judge Christianity by the conduct of Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The only Jesus, I've said, I'll say it thousands of times more, that anybody will ever see is the Jesus in you or the Jesus in me. My Christ and your Christ, for your vision to be complete, must be alive. Because a dead Jesus can't do nothing. Prime example of that is when Joseph of Arimathea asked for the body of Jesus. And Pilate says, he can't be dead. He hadn't suffered enough. He didn't realize, Pilate, that he had the sins of the world on him. Go down there and make sure that he's dead before I release that body. Why? Because Pilate knew a dead Jesus can't heal you. A dead Jesus can't save you. A dead Jesus can't do nothing. But a live Jesus, my God, can heal you, save you, bless you, and help you. He knew that a live Jesus would be a detriment to Rome and a detriment to Pilate. Hmm. Yet for centuries, of homiletical, hermeneutical, philosophical, theological debate and discussion. Jesus is dead to so many because people have not come to their moment of truth. Mm, mm, write this down. The will of God is known only in the light of relationship. Amen. I've had people say, I know Jesse the Brand. No, you don't know me. You know about me. And the only way you go understand relationship with God is to visit each other. Let me say it again. The light or the will of God is known only in the light of relationship. Then there must be a deeper walk of relationship to fellowship. You understand what I'm saying? Well, you hello, Jesus. Hi, Jesse. And I'm constantly saying the same thing. Lord, what will you have me to do? I love perfection. I love when something's done right. I have a beautiful home. We got a lady sitting in here that know how to make drapes, Bertha. I'm telling you, you ain't seen drapes till you see my drapes. People coming in go, my God. They want to touch them. They thick. They heavy. They perfectly laid out. Everything. I couldn't make a drape to save my life. These drapes are so nice, spiders won't even get on them. <laughs> they, they just look, they go, wow, we've never seen such beauty. And she'll pull it over and show me five different linings. And this, and I act like I know what I'm talking about. I go, yeah, but I don't have the foggiest idea. All I want to know is how much did it cost? Didn't make no difference because it's perfection. All by hand. Hand. And I think it's perfect. And you go, no, that ain't right. Move that over here. Put that tassel over here. Do this, do that. She is right there. And people come and go, because they like pieces of furniture. They are phenomenal. Am I telling the truth? You saw it, Jerry? Oh, ooh, ooh. I said, Kathy. She said, just turn me loose, Jesse. Let me do I just found out the other day, Kathy used and Bertha used 400 yards of material just in my bedroom. 400 yards? 
That's four football fields. That's why spiders say, we can't touch it. It's too holy. It's beautiful. That I had an electrician light up the drapes. I used to call them curtains. That ain't curtains. If one of them things fall off, you better be saved because it's going to kill you. It's that heavy. <laughs> them things are heavy, boy. The will of God is known only in the light of relationship. And sometimes when I think I know God, he shows me a side of him I've never seen. And yet it brings me back to, Lord, what will you have me to do? My moment of truth. What is your moment of truth? You should rehearse it on a daily basis. What did God tell each and every one of you to do? Be proud that God spoke to you and picked you. If it's just as a church member, because out of 6.2 billion people, he came and lived inside of you. Which means he's comfortable around you. Brings me to the next point, write it down. There is very little vision about a person who's not lighting up the meaning of Christianity. I'm going to say it again. If you're not talking about your vision, your vision is talking about you. It's telling people you lazy, that you content when God wants you to take the city. But you satisfied with this and that. Why would you let a city go to hell? Why? When you have the ability to change it. Or change a nation in a day by simply doing what God asked you to do. There's very little vision about a person who's not lining up the meaning of Christianity. I've had people say, you, you, I, Mike Murdoch, a good friend of mine, you know, he said, I just, I, I didn't get saved like Justin the Planet. We never thought Justin the Planet would ever get saved. You know, I knew Mike Murdoch when I was a small boy. My grandmother went to his daddy's church. You can ask him today. We just knew that Jesse would bust hell wide open. I was a sinner. I didn't want to go to church. I didn't want to have anything. To, why would I want to believe in healing when every Christian I knew was sick? Why would I want to believe in blessing God, God would bless you when every Christian I knew was busted and broke? Why would I want to believe in a God of love when my God, every Christian I knew, was talking about each other, having church splits and matters are haunted? That's what I liked about the Catholic Church. We didn't know what they said because it was in Latin. <laughs> Not being critical, being truthful. But I guarantee you one thing, when I walked out that confession booth, I felt clean. Didn't take long to mess me up, but I felt clean. <laughs> but I never felt clean in a Protestant church. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Always talking about somebody. My God called to preach the gospel. People came to see me. And a black couple walks in my service with two little beautiful children, sits down on the back pew, looked at me and waved. This was the beginning of my ministry, man. I didn't know they was black, but everybody else in that church did. Saw two deacons get up and walk to the back and just leaned over and said something to that couple, that family. And they went, yes, sir. They started to get up. I said, where y'all going? You got to understand something about Jesse's plans. I don't care if I'm public. Where y'all going? Oh, they said, oh, but Jesse, something come up. We got to go. Yeah. I said, did them deacons tell you to leave? Well, uh, but just, we, we, we got to go. Well, we'll catch you. Now, did them deacons tell you to leave? And that dumb deacon said, well, this is a white church. I looked at that pastor. I said, I hope you got your act together because you're preaching. I said, y'all hungry? Let's go eat lunch. <laughs> I walked out of that. What made me do that? My moment of truth. My moment of truth that God is no respect to a person, that there were good people trying to get a, something from the Lord Jesus Christ. And some dumb deacon <laughs> and a deacon-possessed church was in operation. There was no lighting up in, in the meaning of Christianity. There wasn't any of that. They said, Brother, you don't understand something. 
Whoo, Lord, we got to get out of town. I said, what for? Who you done made the whole church back? We ain't asking you back. I said, you think I give up? Oh, watch it, Jesus. <laughs> And that's why I came up with my first phrase. Let me tell all of y'all, y'all can go to hell. And that ain't cussing, that's a destination. <laughs> and out the door I went, buddy. Some people just fell off the couch in Singapore. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Very little vision in people like that who's not lining up the meaning of the gospel. They don't have a moment of truth. One time in a Methodist church, I gave an altar call, Jerry, and everybody did this. They didn't know what I was talking about. I looked at those people. I said, you mean to tell me you've fallen so far back from your founder? who believed in speaking in tongues the gifts of the Spirit, preaching the word of the living God, whose tabernacle is still in operation where in England? Bristol. In Bristol, England, where Jerry is pastor at Carmel Christian Center. Yes. <laughs> You've fallen so away from the founder of your church. They're just looking at him. I said, get out them pews. Yes, sir. <laughs> How can that be? Lord, what were you having me to do? They didn't have a moment of truth, or if they did, they forgot about it. I want to get on this. Christians rarely do unusual things. But we do usual things in an unusual way. It's kind of hard to get a Christian to do something, because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's what I love about the black race. I got to get that something about the black race. Black race got something in them that no other race got. You mess with a black person, you got every black person to contend with. They get out in the street. <laughs> I won't tell you something. They might even not eat. They may not even like the guy. <laughs> Do you like him? No, I don't like him. But they're gonna stand behind each other. A white person, you're on your own, sucker. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> Is that the truth? <laughs> well, I mean, they're gonna stand for each other. Do you like that guy? Hated guts, but he's black. He's a brother. That's, that's a wonderful quality. That truly is. Now, my grandfather, because I was raised and born in Algiers, me and Michael Melee were born in the same hospital, delivered by the same doctor. You don't think he went nuts when he saw us? <laughs> Both of them in the same hospital. Dr. LaRocca, with a cigar in his mouth. You do what you gotta do. <laughs> He's Italian. My grandpa said, that boy Jesse, he's a Cajun, but he hang around with them Italians. I like Italians. They take care of problems. <laughs> That's why there's the Mississippi River. That's all I'm gonna say about that. You know what I'm talking about, I'll be like, yes, <laughs> yeah, I heard that. That's what my grandpa said, alligator got to eat. <laughs> you think I'm kidding you? He's serious as he could be. Got saved seven days before he died. Mama got him. Christians rarely do unusual things, but we do unusual things in an unusual way. Why am I so unusual? I don't know. But I'm not crazy about the status quo. If you got to make a tough decision, you make it. And quit thinking about what it's going to do to you and think about what it's going to do for the people. Congress, are you listening to me? You're supposed to be our representatives. So quit representing yourself. I'm Jesse Duplantis, and I approve this message. <laughs> are you hearing me? What would I have me to do? <laughs> Write this down. Never permit yourself to be discouraged by opposition to your faith. You know how much opposition I've had against my faith? They don't believe in that faith stuff. 
You into that faith movement? No, it ain't a movement, it's a lifestyle. A movement's when you go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm talking about a lifestyle here. Look at Kathy, she just put her hand over her face. Jesus, help it. <laughs> One of the greatest inventions in the world was a toilet. You don't believe that? Remember the outhouse? Did you have a three-holer? Because if you had a three-holer, you was one big shot. You'd have to go in there with a shoe, bam, bam, just in case there's a rat down there or something. How many of y'all remember them days? Oh, Lord Jesus. We rarely do unusual things, but we do unusual things in an unusual way. We never permit ourselves to be discouraged by the opposition to our faith. How many people told me that faith stuff don't work? I said, oh, it don't work for you, but it works for me. Who do you think you are? Now they get mad at all. I said, sit your ugly self down. Because I'm going to tell you in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was out form and void. Darkness upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of the Lord God said, let's make Jesse. Let's make Michael. Let's make Richie. Let's make Tina. Come on. Let's make them unusual. Not the status quo. Jeff Hackerman got a great church there in Huntsville, but his eyes go farther than Huntsville. Cold Springs. Wonder how he got that name. Some cowboy fell off a horse and said, boy, that water cold. <laughs> so we don't call that place Cold Springs. I went to a town in one time in Montana called Dead Horse. I walked in the store and said, how'd y'all get a name like Dead Horse? Well, there are two cowboys and the guys riding his horse went dead. Just died, named the town Dead Horse. That's exactly how to name that, Dead Horse. You ever heard of Mule Shoe? That's a mule lost a shoe. Well, that's Mule Shoe. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> it's amazing how people get things going. Oh, God, man, we went down. Yeah, we drove in. I said, y'all hungry? I said, what's the name of this town? Lust. <laughs> Boy, Brother Copeland said, it's time to get out of lust. Let's go. <laughs> Boy, I want to tell you, Kenneth Copeland, Gloria Copeland, Jesse and Kathy Duplantis, uh, with Jerry and Carolyn Savell, and Dennis and Vicky Verse. We got out of lust. That's the name of the town, Lust. I wonder how that town got named. <laughs> Lus, Colorado. That's a true story. I said, Brother Colton, we can't eat here. All we need is somebody saying, they're all in lust. <laughs> now, a moment of truth don't work with lust. I'm amazed at how many preachers mess up and make mistakes. I, that's the dumbest thing I've seen in my life. How stupid can you be? Throw away your family and your ministry for some fleeting moment because some woman said you got the stuff. When your wife know you ain't got the stuff, <laughs> your wife know it. She's just trying to make you feel good. <laughs> Look at some of them ladies hitting the husband. Tell you what, <laughs> that's the craziest thing I ever heard of in my life. <laughs> Write this down. I said that for a reason. Never cross the boundary line between the church and the world. See, this, this is the moment of truth. Lord, what we have you do? He's not going to have you go chase another woman. You never cross the boundary line between the church and the world. How in the Old Testament? You don't think they got so backslidden that they start hiring whores? Call them temple prostitutes. Can you believe that? How can you equate your crazy mind that it's okay to have prostitutes to minister to the congregation. You know, that's in the Old Testament. Who would have thought? Who could come up with that great revelation? Man, I've preached hell so hot sometimes, I had people sweating like a whore in church. Oh, a whore in church starts sweating. Oh, we got to get out of here. <laughs> How can any theologian, any priest in any religion think that prostitutes in the temple is of God? 
they hadn't had a moment of truth. Never crossed the boundary line between the church and the world. What did they do? They started drifting. It says in the book of Hebrews 2 verse 1, Therefore we ought to give the most earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Drifting is the reason that the Hebrew epistle was wrote. The whole epistle of Hebrew was wrote because people were drifting. Drifting or slipping is usually unperceived by the person, but it's clearly seen by others. Write it down. Drifting or slipping is usually unperceived by the person, but it's clearly seen by others. You know when somebody backslides and they can't even see it. You try to reach out to them. What does it mean to drift? Simply means surrendering to the influences that surround you. I refuse to let the influence surround me. I'm going to influence them. They're not going to influence me. I have a power in my life. It's called the power of attorney to use the name of Jesus. Do you understand a whole book, a whole epistle was wrote on the word slip and drift? Write this down. Don't let the authority of the Bible be destroyed by drifting from a higher level to a lower level. Don't let the authority of the Bible be destroyed by drifting from a higher level to a lower level. You see, the faith life is easy to live if you give it room to live. It's called the moment of truth. See, the minute the devil tries to tempt me in something, the first thing I say, Bertha, Lord, what will you have me to do? I remember my moment. See, because my vision is controlling my life. And it will control yours. So I don't cross the boundary line. I don't like some things that have happened. I've seen things happen in the church that should not have happened. Well, you know, people change. I believe, the, I believe in working with change. Don't misunderstand me. But there's some things that just flat sin. Can I tell you a story? I may have said it before, but I got to tell you. I'll never forget this. One time I was in a state called California. Years ago. Invited by a big church. I preached that night, had a wonderful service. My kids a blessing. I mean, God moved. I was amazed at how hungry people were. And while I was preaching, he said, they're not just not being fed. Kept telling me that over as I was preaching. So I kept throwing pork chops out. <laughs> you know, spiritually speaking, pork chop. Oh, I ain't had a pork chop. In... <laughs> I ain't ate a pork chop probably 25 years. I ain't had a, a pork chop. It's not a pork chop. It's a poke chop. <laughs> Cajuns, they love stuff so much, they convince themselves it's the other white meat. I was so excited, the hunger of people, the moment of truth, Lord, you have me here. Got back to that hotel, took a shower, cleaned up, about ready to sit down. Knock on the door. I look at my, it's about 10, 30, quarter to 11, I guess. Ain't nobody know me. You know, they got them little places, them little things you can look through there. I just kind of looking at and there's these two beautiful black girls. I'm talking beautiful girls. Brother Jesse? Brother Jesse. And I would have opened the door the whole way, but I had this robe on, this bathrobe, and there was a chain on the thing, so I just kind of, you know, opened it up. I said, yes, uh, we've been sent here by the pastor to minister to you. I say, what? Do you have everything you need? Stupid me. I, ain't, I just come out the glory. You understand? I come out the anointing. I ain't got that on my mind. I say, well, yeah, that fruit basket is wonderful. <laughs> That's what I got on my mind. Lord, I'm about ready to eat a piece of fruit. I said, I'll tell you what. It was really nice. No, no, we're, we, this is our ministry that, the, that God told our pastor that we should follow. You sure you have everything? I said, girls, I got everything. I, I, I still haven't caught it. See, when your mind is not filthy, it doesn't accept dirt real quick. My mind, I'm, I'm a holy man. I know what some people say, take heed when a man thinks he's standing, lest he fall. I'm not standing in my strength. I'm standing in the strength of God. 
Let me just be honest with you. I'm this kind of man. If I'm going to hell, I'm going with gusto. I'm going smoking dope, drinking booze, and knocking women down as fast as I can get them. I'm going to say it worldwide. But if I'm going to heaven, I'm going healing the sick, raising the devil, raising the dead, casting out devils, and freely receiving, freely give. My God, if you go to heaven, do something. If you go to hell, at least do something. Finally, I said, girls, I, I, I said, really? I said, no, I, I said, just tell the pastor, there's, there's just no more. No, no, we're here to help you and to minister to you. And it began to dawn on me. I said, you ain't here. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, it's our ministry. I said, girls, get out of here. Don't, who told you that was your ministry? Our pastor. You know, he's the man of God. I said, girls, go home. I'll deal with your pastor tomorrow. You're not a sexual object to be conquered. I need no ministry from you. Okay. They, they left. I called Kathy. I told Kathy. She said, why did you open the door for you, white-headed fool? I said, I, I didn't open it all the way. What was you wearing? A bathrobe. A bathrobe? Why didn't you call security? Well, I just never thought of it. Next day, the pastor picked me up for lunch. He said, what's the matter, brother Jesse? They wasn't pretty enough for you? I said, what is your problem? I said, man, you going to hell. You done convinced them two people that that's their ministry. What kind of evilness is in you? Oh, brother Jesse, you just old fashioned. I said, judgment is on you and around you. I said, bring me to the hotel now. It wasn't three months later, he dropped dead. I said, I said, bring me to the airport. That's what, and I mean, I got on a plane, I got out of there. I know when I see judgment, I'm getting out of here. When God, if God told me I'm destroying New Orleans, I'm going to say, everybody get the hell out of here. Now, I can say that because I'm in my church. That ain't cussing, that's a destination. <laughs> Some of y'all gonna try that in Alabama and get shocked. You might not want to do that. But you see, that's very normal in the state of Louisiana. Am I telling the truth, Michael? <laughs> How many times my grandpa would tell me when I was a little boy, oh boy, oh hell boy, drink your milk. <laughs> okay, Papa. Man went, died. I personally believe he didn't make heaven his home. He had literally infected people because he was, had charisma. But he never saw a woman like God saw her, a speaking spirit. He just saw her as a sexual object to be conquered, to be played with and then thrown away. Sad. You see, he crossed the boundary between the church and the world. His moment of truth dissolved. Maybe at one time he had it, I don't know. But I thought, how can you drop that low? This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.